By the 20th of August, the 5th Army under the leadership of General Charles Lanrezac had commenced a strategic concentration spanning a 40-kilometer front along the Samba River. This focal point was centered on Charleroi, with its reach extending eastward towards the formidable Belgian fortress of Namur. To fortify the left flank of the 5th Army, the Cavalry Corps, commanded by General André Sordet, was deployed. Concurrently, efforts were made to coordinate with the British Expeditionary Force, BEF, positioning itself at Mons. The French forces, totaling 15 divisions, had been strategically positioned following the redistribution of troops to the Lorraine region. They found themselves confronting an opposition of 18 German divisions stemming from the 2nd Army, led by General Karl von Bülow, and the 3rd Army, commanded by Colonel General Max von Hausen. These German forces were in motion, advancing southwestward from Luxembourg toward the Meuse River, presenting a formidable challenge to the French defensive line. On the dawn of August 21st, Joseph Joffrey, the French commander-in-chief leading the Grand Cartier General, GQG, relayed crucial information to General Charles Lanrezac and the British Expeditionary Force, BEF German forces were mobilizing westward. Following the strategic guidelines of Plan 17, the 3rd and 4th Army's position further south were instructed to advance towards Arlon and Neufchateau, respectively, with the aim of engaging German troops in Belgian Luxembourg. Simultaneously, the 5th Army, under Lanrezac's command, received orders to fortify the Meuse River defense up to Namur, while the British were directed to align their movement generally towards Soignies, situated northeast of Mons. Lanrezac promptly deployed the 5th Army along the Sambre River and communicated his maneuvers to Joffrey by midday, around 12.30. However, unbeknownst to Lanrezac, skirmishes had already erupted between German units and his vanguards in the region spanning Namur to Charleroi. At 1400 hours, General Augustine Michel, commanding forces at Namur, alerted Lanrezac to the escalating situation. By 1600 hours, GQG confirmed that German forces were indeed advancing westward, prompting Lanrezac to order reconnaissance missions by aviation units to monitor enemy troop movements. He also instructed his subordinates to prepare for a potential offensive, emphasizing readiness to launch an attack by crossing the Sambre towards Namur and Nivelles. Despite reporting only minor engagements on the X Corps front to Joffrey at 1900 hours, Lanrezac received authorization from Joffrey at 2000 hours to exercise discretion in determining the opportune moment to commence his offensive. By evening, skirmishes intensified as vanguards from the 19th Division, stationed between Florifu and Jemepser Sambra, repelled German assaults. Prisoner reports confirmed a substantial German presence in the vicinity. Further westward, Arsamont, initially defended by a battalion and later reinforced by a regiment from the 20th Division, was relinquished by 2100 hours. Easternmost elements were ordered to retreat by the Corps commander, Def Forges, who coordinated positions around Foss in collaboration with I Corps and III Corps. The Germans successfully crossed the Sambra, marking a significant advancement. On the III Corps front, outposts of the 5th Division came under attack around 1500 hours. Despite initial setbacks, German forces persisted in their assaults and managed to breach defenses at Tamines, Roselies, and Aso. Although a French counterattack briefly reclaimed Aso, it failed to dislodge the Germans from their other bridgeheads. By 2300 hours, Corps Commander Soret reported to Lanrezac that efforts were ongoing to recapture the bridges held by the 5th Division. The morning after the tumultuous events of August 21st, General Charles Lanrezac provided a detailed report to Joseph Joffrey, confirming the severity of the German assault on Namur. Highlighting the actions of both the X and III Corps, Lanrezac urged for swift intervention from the IV Army, emphasizing the necessity for their immediate involvement in the unfolding conflict. Meanwhile, on the French right flank, General D'Esprit issued orders to the troops of the I Corps to initiate preparatory movements for an impending offensive maneuver. Simultaneously, he expedited the relief of the 2nd Division by deploying the 51st Reserve Division. However, these offensive preparations were abruptly halted by an unexpected attack launched by the 12 Saxon Corps, targeting advanced elements stationed at the Dinant and Anserem bridges. Although this assault did not impede the relief efforts for Esprit's troops, he informed Lanrezac around 1300 hours that the ongoing situation hindered his ability to reinforce positions along the Sambra. Subsequently, Lanrezac authorized the demolition of all Meuse bridges except those at Givet, Hastier, and Dinant at 1415 in response to the escalating German offensive. Furthermore, the Germans initiated attacks along the remainder of the 5th Army front, intensifying the already volatile situation on the battlefield. On August 23, the conflict persisted as the French center, stationed around Charleroi, began to falter. 
As the Third Army crossed the Meuse River, it launched an assault on the French right flank, which was guarded by the I Corps. This aggressive maneuver posed a significant threat to sever the Fifth Army's line of retreat. However, the I Corps swiftly responded with a counterattack, halting the advancing German forces and preventing the encirclement of the Fifth Army. Amidst the ongoing engagements, the evacuation of Namur and reports of the Fourth Army's retreat from the Ardennes region reached General Charles Lanrezac. Faced with the looming danger of being surrounded and isolated from the broader French army, Lanrezac made the decisive decision to order the withdrawal of the Fifth Army. This strategic move aimed to avoid potential encirclement and secure the preservation of French forces. Ultimately, the German army emerged victorious from the day's battles, marking a significant setback for the French forces. Aftermath Analysis The retreat of the Fifth Army following the Battle of Charleroi can be seen as a pivotal moment that prevented a decisive defeat for the French army by thwarting the envelope envisioned in the Schlieffen Plan. Despite this strategic withdrawal, the French faced further defensive engagements, notably in the Battle of Saint Quentin, which pushed them perilously close to the outskirts of Paris. In the aftermath of these events, General Charles Lanrezac was relieved of his command by Joseph Joffrey on September 3, a decision made shortly after the dismissal of General Pierre Ruffet, commander of the Third Army, just four days prior. Lanrezac was succeeded by General D'Esprit. The 1934 literary work The Comedy of Charleroi by French fascist and writer Pierre Drew La Rochelle delves into the author's interpretation of the events surrounding the battle. Casualties According to Eric Dornbrose's 2001 account, casualties within the Fifth Army numbered around 10,000. Additionally, Edward Spears' 1999 edition of Liaison 1914 documented approximately 11,000 casualties within the German Second Army, along with the capture of 4,000 French prisoners and 35 guns. Holger Herwig's 2009 work noted that the Third Army sustained approximately 4,275 casualties at Dinant. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.